Hello, and welcome to section 8.8. .8. Today we're going to look at what we call logistic growth functions. Now, so far in this chapter, we've looked at exp um, exponential growth functions, where our function f of x is going to increase without bound as x increases. Uh, and what I mean by that is something like maybe a curve that looks kind of like this. Well, in 8.8, .8, we're going to look at a function where we end up with a graph that looks more like this, where you can see initially it increases in an exponential fraction, but then eventually it's going to, even though it's still increasing, it is going to taper off and kind of start to decrease, and then eventually it's going to kind of plateau out. And it's going to plateau out in this upper bound that we call the carrying capacity. Logistic growth functions are used to model real life quantities whose growth levels will kind of eventually taper off because of rate of growth changes. Uh, and if you think of something like that, think of like a population. A uh, population will grow exponentially, but eventually it's going to reach a point where, you know, things can't continue to grow forever, so it will kind of start to level off. So the formula for list a logistic growth function looks something like this here, where we have y equals c, which is our carrying capacity, divided by 1 plus ae to the negative rx. a, c, and r are all going to be positive constants. So if we go ahead and look at example 1, we're going to evaluate the logistic growth function f of x equals 10 divided by 1 plus 2e to the negative 0.8x for each value. And I would like for you to try to enter this into your calculator because this is going to require some parentheses. Um, and it, it's, it's not terribly hard, but you do have to get it entered correctly in order for it to work. So the first part, which is part A, says we're going to evaluate the function at negative 2. So we're going to end up with 10 divided by 1 plus 2e to the negative 0.8 times a negative 2. And when you type that in, you should end up with something around 0 0.917. Likewise, for part B, we're going to end up evaluating the function at f of 0.9, so we end up with one or 10 divided by 1 plus 2e to the negative 0.8 times 0.9, and when you type that in, you should get something around 5.07. And if you notice, as we go from a negative 2, we're down here in a low range, and then just by bumping up to 0.9, we've all of a sudden jumped up to 5.07. Now when we go to evaluate our function at f of 6, we're going to end up with 10 divided by 1 plus 2e to the negative 0.8 times 6. And if you've typed this incorrectly, you should end up with something around 9.84. So again, by jumping from 0.9 to 6, we have jumped from 5.07 to 9.84. And if you want, I would encourage you to graph this on your calculator to make sure that you end up getting that curve that looks something like this. And if you're having difficulties with that, please make sure to ask me in class. Now when we go to graph these functions, there's some key pieces within the formula that we can look at um, that will kind of help us set up our graph. And the first one says that when we're looking at the graph of a logistic growth function, or y equals c divided by 1 plus ae to the negative rx, these graphs have the following characteristics. First of all, we're going to end up with horizontal asymptotes, um, or horizontal lines, at y equals 0 and y equals c. Because remember, c is what we call the carrying capacity, which means that's what our function is going to approach. Then we can find our y-intercepts um, by plugging in c divided by 1 plus a. The domain of our logistic growth function is all real numbers, and your range is going to be somewhere in between 0 and c. 
And finally, we can see that the graph is increasing from left to right. Now, to the left of the point that we call maximum growth, the rate of increase is increasing. And that would be, like, if we have something that kind of looks like this, and we'll say that your point of maximum growth is going to be somewhere around here, this region in here is increasing. Now, eventually, we're going to hit, and that's because if you were to go in and draw, like, a tangent line, you'd see your slope is a, a pretty steep rate. Well, then, on anything beyond the, um, or to the right of this point, you'll see that our slope now actually starts to kind of flatten out. So we'll say the rate of increase is decreasing, and that's because that slope isn't quite as steep as it is down here in this region. So for example two, we're going to graph the logistic growth function 3 divided by 1 plus 5e e to the negative 2x. So before we even get started, we know that we have y, or I'm sorry, um, horizontal asymptotes at y equals 0, and y equals our c value, which in this case is 3. So if I go in and I draw my horizontal asymptotes, I have y equals 3 right here, and y equals 0 is just our um, x-axis there. We have a y-intercept at 3 divided by 1 plus 5, which is 3, 6, or 1 half, so your y-intercept is going to be right here. And now if we go ahead and graph this, you'll see that we end up with something that looks like this. And again, please verify that you can do this on your calculator, and if you're having trouble, please let me know. For example 3, we're going to solve the logistic growth function, and in this case we're given that 30 divided by 1 plus 5e e to the negative 2x equals 10. So when we go to solve, our ultimate goal is to get x by itself. So in order to do that, the first thing we need to do is we need to clear out our denominator. Because our x value is in the denominator, we need to get it up in the numerator. And to do that, we're going to multiply both sides by that denominator. So if we have 30 divided by 1 plus 5e e to the negative 2x equals 10, I'm going to multiply this side by 1 plus 5e e to the negative 2x, and I'm going to multiply this side by 1 plus 5e e to the negative 2x, and what that's going to do is that's going to cancel this and this, and leave me with 30. So 30 equals 10 times 1 plus 5e e to the negative 2x. I do not want to distribute that 10 because I can actually just go ahead and divide by 10 right now since I'm multiplying here and here. So to undo that multiplication, I'm going to divide by 10. And that's going to cancel this and this. And I'm left with 3 equals 1 plus 5e e to the negative 2x. And now we have an uh, equation that looks very similar to what we were doing back in 8.6. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides, which will give us 2 equals 5e e to the negative 2x. I need to go and get the e piece by itself before I can go ahead and um, figure out how I'm going to eliminate e. So in order to do that, I have to divide by 5. So now I have 2 fifths equals e to the negative 2x. And now I'm at the point where the piece that's attached to the x is by itself, and that's my e. And from ch all of chapter 8 now, hopefully we've learned that in order to get rid of the e, I can just take the natural log of both sides. So if I take the natural log of 2 fifths, and I take the natural log of e to the negative 2x, our natural log of e is going to cancel out, and that's going to leave us with just 2x, and I have the natural log of 2 fifths over here. So now I'm going to go ahead and solve for x, and to do that, 
I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 2. My negative 2's over here will cancel, and we're going to be left with x equals the natural log of 2 fifths divided by a negative 2. And before we continue on, right here, I know if I take the natural log of 2 fifths, which is a number between 0 and 1, I'll get a negative number, and I'm going to divide by a negative 2, so I know that my final answer should be positive. So when we plug this into our calculator then, we should end up with something around 0 0.458. And again, if you're having issues, please make sure to let me know. When we're dealing with um, real life scenarios, logistic growth functions are often more useful um, to use when we're modeling something than an exponential growth function because the logistic growth model will actually account for constraints that are placed on growth because not everything will um, grow 100% exponentially as we talked about before, something like population. Um, so when we use logistic growth functions, it, it's just kind of a, a more accurate picture of what we're getting in a real life scenario. So when we look at example four, it says that the average monthly price P of a company's stock over the last 12 months can be modeled by P equals 68.5 divided by 1 plus 19.9 e to the negative 0.61x. Okay, and I apologize that negative or equals 10 should not have been there, so please don't write that in. Okay, where T is the number of months, we want to graph the function and describe what it tells you about the price of stock. So I've gone ahead and graph this for you. Please make sure you can do this yourself as well. And this is the graph that we um, get. You can see that it is a logistic growth function. Um, and if you can see, this right here is the number 69. So you can see that our function is approaching that, but it, it's not going to cross it. It is an asymptote. Our asymptote really is at 68.5. And what you'll notice is the price of our stock actually is increasing rapidly kind of down here in this region. And then we hit a point where the rate of growth decreases right in through here. And if we look at um, the months, because down here our y or x-axis represents months, you can see that somewhere... Uh, I don't know, let's say around maybe five months or so is kind of where our, our growth of that stock price is really increasing right here. And then we hit the five-month mark, and then it kind of starts to taper off in the growth. And then, again, we notice that our stock price kind of plateaus out around the 68.5 or $68.50 mark. So we're able to get all of that information just off from this graph and this function right here. So um, at this point, if you have any questions, please make sure to write them down. If you're having any issues graphing or plotting or evaluating the functions, please make a note of that as well, and I will be more than happy to help you in class. And I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow.